Well, my soccer universe, it is official now. Jose the first is the new emperor of Rome. It's as simple as that. Uh, Roma fans have been embracing Mourinho and he delivered the glory that, for instance, uh, Spurs did not get. So uh, he, he's definitely happy and knowing Jose Mourinho, it is something we'll now never ever hear again. No, of course, he's gonna make a big deal out of the fact that he, I think he has won five European trophies or something like that. And that, of course, he has won. He's the only one who has won all three of them. I thought this was the first one. I actually think the fact that this was the first ever Euro Europa Conference League winner's medal uh, handed out, or trophy handed out, that makes this one actually extra special. Yeah. We'll talk about the Conference League final. Um, I have to say, uh, there was a certain 90s, late uh, 90s, 80s, um, maybe early 2000s feel to that final, in the sense that unfortunately there were, um, how, how, how to say, there was conflict between the fans. Uh, I think the night before the uh, Conf Conference final, um, Roma and Feyenoord fans uh, got at each other and it was, I think there were quite a few Roma, more Roma fans were arrested. I didn't want to say it in my preview, but I remember that the one time that they met, this was when so many Feyenoord fans came to Rome and actually devastated the, um, the, um, uh, the fountain on the bottom of the list of the Spania and so on. So, you know, I, there was already a, there's a little bit of history between those two teams, even though they haven't met all that often. And I was afraid that, uh, you know, you desecrated a beautiful city, that this is gonna get uh, ugly because, you know, both fan bases are as great of a support as this as they have uh both fan spaces i think are also unfortunately known for uh their violence so yep that happened too uh and then after the game yes roma won it uh there were also quite some uh fights in rotterdam itself where uh, many had to be uh, arrested by police. So th that's the ugly side, but that's exactly the late 80s, uh, early 90s, uh, I think the 90s, this, this was kind of the 80s side of the, of, of, of the final. The 90s side of the final was, I have to say, especially in the first half, it was a typical final. It was a typical final. It was pragmatic Roma and a timid Feyenoord. The two teams were feeling each other. There were not many chances. And then more or less with the first real chance of, of the game, the goal came. Roma then, in a very Italian way, almost uh, defended it. Uh, had to weather the storm. In the end, they went through. Uh, and then in the end, it was comfortable with Feyenoord. Never really challenging. Uh, come like a 60th or 65th minute. 65th minute, something like that. So uh, that was kind of the 90s feel. It was a typical final, not really, um, not really all out attacking, uh, rather tight. And there was none of, and, and even the, the play was not necessarily very modern. Um, but it came down to the fact that you know we know how Mourinho is lets his teams play. Um, and also that Feyenoord against such a tight and uh, tough defense, yep. Um, and then uh, what was the 2000s feel? Well, Jose Mourinho winning a European title, which has not happened. Well, he, it was not that long ago that, that he won it with United. But you know, there is a certain feel to it that Jose Mourinho is a bit of a, th a, bit of a thing of the past. Let's put it that way. So yeah. Those are, my, those are my, my early thoughts. I mean, if we go in, 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 into the game, uh, for me, you know, I said in the preview, Roma is among my uh, favorite teams. It's, they're, nowhere, they're not where Milan is or Lask is. However, uh, I think I would definitely call them my second favorite um, Italian team. And that puts them really, really, really high on the ladder for me. Um, Feyenoord, it's not that I dislike Feyenoord, but you know, uh, maybe um, there is some Austrian connection, but for me, uh, the reason why I wouldn't have minded Feyenoord winning is because after last coach Glasner winning the Europa League with Frankfurt, we would have last captain Trauner uh, win a uh, European trophy as well. And Trauner, I think, is uh, only one of a few Austrian uh, players to ever play in a European final. So that is really, really special. 
Unfortunately, he played a big role in that final, uh, but not a positive one, which actually uh, uh, makes me a little bit sad, uh, anyway, because I, th I really think that uh, he is a really good good, good player, but uh, exactly for what he is known for, that's something he messed up. As I said, uh, the early exchanges, uh, it was kind of touchy-feely. I'm very happy I got the jersey matchup right. Yay! That was not hard. That it was not hard. And I have to say, uh, my wife yesterday asked me, do you like those great jerseys? So kind of, yeah, I think there's something about them, blah, 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 blah. And I said, I think it is quite cool that they are playing with yellow pants and socks to kind of balance the grayness of it out. And I think I stick with that obser observation. There is, I, I agree, they are not, I don't like. I agree, they're not the prettiest jerseys, but with the, the gray, with the yellow, there is a certain pop to it. And then if you pair it with the yellow on the bottom, I think it was all right. Um, again, I wish that Roma go back to their traditional look. Red, white, black. Roma in a red is fine, but uh, to me, Roma, if you have a really a giallo rosso uh, top, Meaning uh, something like this, you know, you have the red with a little bit of um, uh, yellow or orange, more or more, more, more or less than the white pants and then the black socks with the club's colors. This is a look that I am long, I haven't seen uh, Roma play for in a long time and I really, really missed the look because that's the classic to me. This is when I say that Roma has one of the best uniforms in the world, if not the best one. I, I, I really do. I really do. I think Roma jerseys are always something that you can look at and, and marvel at in many ways, especially of late. So yeah, uh, the other thing that I have to say uh, was that um, while I don't think that uh, referee Istvan Kovac was as blatantly off as uh, Slavko Vincic at the Europa League final, um, he almost let the game also flow a little bit too much in the sense that whatever uh, the backline uh, around Chris, uh, Chris Smalling did to um, Dessas, it was not always really, really nice. Let's put it that way. Uh, I think a yellow card could have been given at certain uh, points, but sometimes not even foul was given. Um, the first real action in, in the game is Mkhitaryan, who actually started, had to come off. He just became fit. Obviously, he was not fit. And Sergio Oliveira had to uh, come, come. But that's probably the one um, cha uh, change that Mourinho could make where there wouldn't be too much. Effect. I think Mkhitaryan is probably a little bit more... Um, um, better on the creative side of things. On the other side, Sergio Oliveira is, I think, a, lot, a whole lot more uh, solid in many ways. So, um, you don't want to make an exchange so early, but it didn't really matter. Then, um, I think Roma was very happy to give Feyenoord the ball. And Feyenoord had a really tough time getting through and breaking them down. And then the first time that Roma really launched a counter hack, it was um, uh, Tammy Abraham and Trauna needed to make a uh, tactical foul. And that they kind of a little bit uh, described his game. He Trauna is, and I know this is the last question, I know him very, very well. I don't want, want, want to make it all of him. He is uh, a, a player that has an incredible sense of anticipation and positional play. However, when the game gets too fast, this is where he has a problem. And this is exactly what, 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 what happened, that uh, Tate Mabem just, uh, just got past him when uh, Feyenoord were blocking all high. And then uh, it was uh, actually, actually the, one of the few uh, phases of, 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 of possession where the ball then comes to uh, Mancini, who immediately cuts a cross in and the Feyenoord defense and namely Trauner were completely caught out of, out, 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 out of position. Uh, Trauner tries to get, he he is not in the right position to defend Zaniolo proper, properly, but then also the way Zaniolo takes the ball down with his chest and gets it over the goalie, and yes, uh, it was uh, the regular uh, Feyenoord goalie who has not been playing for a, for, for, for a long while, uh, Bailo, just taps it over him, and he comes out, and I have to say, I think uh, a goalie that is fully in it Probably will still save this ball, but the way he he I mean, the ball gets just over his head it was a brilliant goal by Zaniolo. And from that moment on, 
It was really, really, really tough. I mean, there was not another chance by um, Fair, 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 by, by Fair, but I think in, in, in a build up there was an elbow on Dessas by Smalling, which is something that I would have at least wanted to see one more time because that didn't seem quite kosher as well. So I really think that um, the referee was, a, let's say, a bit more generous in the defending on the defending side of things. Um, and you can see this Dessas was definitely um, a little bit um, shaken by the whole ordeal. However, if that goal was the one thing that Feyenoord needed to really start playing, uh, then so also be it. I mean, finally, we got really an exciting opening 15 minutes where Feyenoord went all out. Hit the woodwork work twice, the first one after a shortly played corner, uh, where Tana was there, but I think it was Mancini who actually put on the ball onto the, um, the, the post. The ball comes again, then um, Rui Patricio needed to make a save. Um, and then uh, a, little, a little bit later, a wonderful shot by Malasios. A really well taken shot that uh, Rui Patricio just gets his hand on and it goes on to, on, on to the other um, Oh, on the same post again, with, or I guess the crossbar. Um, and then there were a few more other chances where Feyenoord was really, really, really pressing. But it took about 15 minutes and then Roma settled the game again. And at that point, I even said to to, to I mean, I was, I was uh, more or less neutral in that game. Although I didn't like the way necessarily that Roma played because I know that Roma can play much, much better. Uh, but I was an I neutral, and then I kind of said to my wife at one point, you know, Feyenoord had all these chances, but since they didn't score, I think it is very likely that this game ends 2-0 before Roma. And uh, yes, the chances were there. I think Roma, with a little bit more clinical finishing, could have made a second goal there. I didn't see a great Feyenoord chance afterwards then. I really didn't. I mean, they tried but there were so many missed crosses or misplaced crosses where you really got the feeling, I think, as the latest in the 75th minute. I mean, even if he, uh, if Arnes Lotten at the, at the end played a 2-4-4, I mean, he brought on literally every striker that he had on his bench. It didn't work. It didn't work. It was just uh, too little and the Roma were just way too comfortable. Yes, the Roma picked up a whole lot of yellow cards uh, with taking fouls, delay of game. They even started going to a corner flag as early as I think the 80th minute or something. Uh, or, or something like that. They just wanted to kill off that game. And how much it meant for Roma, you could see at the final whistle. I mean, I have seen celebrations uh, after a European Cup triumph. But the way the Roma fans went about it, I really had a feeling that uh, they know that this is the first uh, European title or UEFA title. I think they won the Fairs Cup, as I said. But this is the first UEFA European title that Roma have won. Yes, it's only the third tier, but for Roma, this is a huge deal. Roma doesn't win that many trophies. And having that day of European glory was absolutely uh, immense for them. At the same time, you saw that Feyenoord uh, also, they were a little bit dejected. Uh, what was good to see that after, after the game, they battled hard, but um, that after, after the game, both teams, you know, there was not uh, uh, lots of ill will against uh, each other, uh, which is usually not happening after after final. But um, I, actually, I actually like the scenes where most of the Roma players went to all the Feyenoord no, no, players, blah, blah, blah. And was of course the wave of honor now at the at the the guard of honor and so on uh for the referee at the fair place i honestly gotta say uh the guard of honor for the referee I always find a little bit weird honestly uh the last thing i want to say because i've not mentioned it before uh, what's up with uh uefa president jeffrey have you seen he's the metal robot he's there he always has his hand like this ta -da, metal on Handshake and already the here. Metal on, da 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 da. It is metal on, da da da. Hand back. It is such a weird sight, honestly. Uh, but they have a pat down. I mean, this is really well done. So, yeah, Roma wins the Conference League. I think overall, looking back at the entire season, I have to say that the Conference League was a success uh, in a direct and an in in indirect way. Um, yes. 
the direct way is I think that this is a competition the fans take take to it. I think it was especially in the knockout stage a, a rather exciting comp competition, especially from, from from the qualifying. We we got some really nice results. We got probably the with Fafe not the team that uh, entertained the most into the final. Uh, we had great matchups. Would I like that it's not so together with the Europa League? Yes, I think I would like to see a little bit more separation and, you know, maybe play even some games. I have uh, so, 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 so suggested you can have an early slot on Tuesday, an early slot on Wednesday, an early slot on Thursday. Put the Europa League, um, uh, you know, on a, a Wednesday slot and the Thursday late slot, the Conference League, the early uh, Thursday slot and the early Tuesday slot and then have the Champions League. I think this would uh, a little bit, I think, uh, would shine a little a little bit more spotlight in. But I think um, we have winners that everyone can say, okay, those are big teams. Although they're, uh, they're maybe not the top, top, top. But I think they're worthy winners in, 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 in a way. And every team that was in the, in, in the competition, especially when they got to the quarterfinal, semifinal stage, they, they, gave, they, they gave it all, even a Leicester team, because they wouldn't qualify for Europe over there, uh, over um, uh, the Premier League. Now, both teams here had already qualified for next season's Europa League, so this took a little bit the edge of the final in that sense. The other way that I think that the Conference League was really, really successful is that it actually lifted the level of the Europa League. The Europa League felt a whole lot more cohesive and stronger than it was before. And in that sense, bravo UEFA, I think you did something good. Also giving a final to Tirana, um, a not so uh, well-known uh, European uh, town, was also, I think, a good thing. I think the final was played, we played in a stadium that was a little bit too small. So, yeah. On uh, yesterday's finals in the Conference League, um, do you agree with largely with my assessment? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!